Greetings YouTube. Today it's time for another bargain video. Relatively short one. Um, I have a bunch of DVDs and not a whole lot else. Some interesting items though. I think I have a nice selection this, this time around. Um, I was bad. I picked up a couple of books. Um, Grave Secrets um, of Dinosaurs, Soft Tissue, and Hard Science, which I already have a home for, so when I'm done reading with it, it's gone. Uh, Wild Trees, which is about uh, the redwoods and the researchers that are studying the life that lives in the canopies. And we have a bunch of DVDs. We have uh, Snake in the Crane's Shadow, which looks like a really horrible martial art movie. And I think I may have seen this when I was a kid watching Kung Fu Theater. Who knows? Then we have Manticore, which looks like a bad sci-fi um, um, film. But it's called the Manticore, and I want to see what, the, what they do with something called the Manticore. So I had to pick that up. Cast a Deadly Spell. Now this is a fascinating film. I believe it was an HBO original, or it was on. It was it was an original to a cable network. It may have been HBO. And it is a story of a detective, our detective. It's done in a film noir style, so Mickey Mickey Spillane, that kind of thing. Um, and the main character is H.P. Lovecraft, the only detective in L.A. that does not use magic in a place where everyone uses magic. So it's our world with magic, which makes no sense, but it was entertaining the first time I saw it. And it was years ago. I haven't seen it in probably over a decade. Um, so I saw, found this for cheap. And I'm like, cool, I'll pick that up. Um, then we have Superman Batman Apocalypse, which is a two-disc special edition. And I don't think I've seen that one at all. Then we have Jet Li's Black Mask. I've heard good things about this. I don't think I've ever actually, I think I've seen clips of it. I never watched the whole thing. We have the 10th anniversary of Pretty in Pink, a film I have not seen in a very long time, and now I have a commentary track. Um, then we have Up, a film that my wife has been looking for for ages, but they'd always been asking too much, and now I found it for um, three bucks. So I'm like, for three bucks, I'll pick it up. Then we have some new DVDs. We have After Earth, which I picked up at a sale at Walmart for two bucks. Piercy Jackson's Sea of Monster, which I picked up for four bucks. Um, well, actually less. And then... Live, uh, Live, Die, Repeat, which is also known as Edge of Tomorrow, which is the Tom Cruise science fiction film from last summer, this past summer, I should say, which I heard was very well received. I haven't had a chance to see it. And I picked up all three of these films for under 14 bucks. So that was a good deal. They were also they were selling like full seasons of certain television series for like $9.99 or something. It was quite, quite amazing. Um, then we have a stick fa figure. Now, this is a set where you build this character. Um, and if I can figure out how to do a high, do a sped up video, I may actually do a video of me building this. But I don't want to do it at regular speed because I'm not particularly fast at these things. It would be very boring. But if I could just like do a sped up one where people could watch me build it, I may do that. So if I can figure out how to do that, cool. I'm using Windows Movie Maker. If anybody knows how to do that, give me a, drop me a line. Then we have the opening shot, which is a a little shadow box with three Korean masks. This is a gift from my um, therapist. He actually did a thesis on masks at one point in his uh, educational career. So I thought he would appreciate that and I got it at a thrift shop. So it was a good price. Um, then we have a giant spoon. This is a silver plated spoon. Um, it is from England. Don't know if you can see that, but it does say England there. Um, and it has a really nice weight. And I just think that it would be handy to have a large spoon that I can use. It comes with a bag, the original box. I'll probably keep the box. There's even a little uh, card in there which tells you, suggests how you should use this for like, for soup, for, for salads, for pilaf, which made me smile. Um, then we have a couple of figures. We have a little goofy dragon that someone made by hand out of ceramics. And it made me smile. So I picked that up. Um, then we have an a Swedish horse. I can't remember what this is actually called, the style of art this is. My wife is of Swedish heritage, and she believes that this may be a, an original horse from Sweden, like a wooden horse from Sweden. So we picked it up at a good price. It was like three bucks. Well, that was cool. Then we have, I didn't, we don't have a Liberty Bell in our collection. And one of the reasons we never had had a, a Liberty Bell in our collection is all of them sound horrible. But this one, actually has a decent tone. So that ends up in here. Whoops, I just realized I forgot some items. Bummer, give me a minute, I'll go grab them. Um, then we have this one, which is a thistle, and it was made in England. It says, in fact, it's inside, made in England. Um, and it also has a nice tone. 
I always associate the thistle with Scotland, not England, but that's me. Um, then we have a ball peen hammer, which needs a little bit of touch up. They may take this outside next spring and grind that, that, that fold over right there off. But I wanted one that was a little heavier, I get it for three bucks. And then we have this. I didn't even know what this was when I bought it. This is for repairing tires, apparently, but I picked it up for a buck at, at a thrift shop. And I picked it up because, well, it's incredibly comfortable, profoundly comfortable. Um, and this is a great example of an improvised weapon. Picked it up for a dollar. You could put this to a toolbox and no one is going to bat an eye. Oh, it's for repairing tires. That's not an issue. But it's also really deadly in close quarter combat. Quite, quite cool. Um, then we have a very boring pair of sweatpants. I need another pair of sweatpants. So I got another pair of sweatpants. And we have a jacket. This is kind of a medium weight jacket. It's not a parka because it has like no, almost no insulation at all in it. But I'm going to see if I can waterproof it because it probably needs it because I've been looking for a medium kind of a medium weight raincoat because the one I have right now is really light and I want something I can use when I'm shoveling because I like to just throw on a, uh, a shirt under that like you know a sweater or, or, or a fleece or something so I don't get too hot. I don't want to wear my parker. I don't want to wear my pea coat. It's way too warm when I'm shoveling. So I've been looking for something and I found this today. Now the two items I forgot, way over here. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna visit the items. One is a uh, ceramic vase, because you know how much I love ceramics. And, and Visigoth will be thrilled that I am that I have uh, I have a piece of uh, ceramics. And the other is a Galileo's thermom thermometer, which is cool. And I picked this one up, they actually had two of them. One which was a larger one Though I'm not sure if it was a thermometer or a barometer, um, but it, this one has a hook, has a loop at the top, so I may hang that somewhere. So it kind of, kind of like, I think I might hang it on the wall. I've got a couple of extra plant hangers kicking around the house from old projects that, that we no longer need. So I may hang that up somewhere. So there you go, folks. This has been my kind of rambly uh, bargain video. But I don't think I got some cool things, and I got some movies I've been wanting to watch. I heard really horrible things about After Earth, but I like a good science fiction movie, so I want to see that. Um, uh, I heard mixed things about Sea of Monsters, but I enjoyed the first Percy Jackson. I had fun. I didn't have any. I wasn't comparing it to the books because I never read them. But it was a fun romp. And then we have uh, The Edge of Tomorrow, which I've heard good things about. And now I have a copy. And of course, Up is just awesome. Now I contend that the first ten minutes of Up are the only part of the film that deals with reality, and that at the moment when the film becomes fantastical when he puts the balloons out the, out the window, that represents the moment when he has killed himself. And the rest of the film is his dying mind creating a fantasy as he eases himself into the afterlife. This is an incredibly depressing way to look at this film, but I think it fits perfectly with the tone of the film. That for the first 10 minutes, it's the real world. And after that, he just slides away into a fantasy. One where there's a happy ending. Because in real life, he doesn't have one. Yes, I know. I have a bummer note. I apologize. But it's what I've been thinking about this movie since I first saw it. Hope everyone had a pleasant Thanksgiving. And I'm looking forward to the Yule season!